If you learned everything about Africa from the Western media, chances are you don't know the reality about Africa. It's because the Western media portrays Africa as the darkest and least developed land where inferior people live, who do not know how great the West is. It turns out that there are reasons behind spreading these kinds of misconceptions about Africa. If people were told the truth, they would leave the Western countries and settle in Africa due to the life it offers. But before you think about that, you first have to know what lies you were told about Africa and what kind of land it is in reality. So, does it really snow in Africa? Is it a country or a continent? And do all people live in mud huts there? Welcome to a new episode of Black Africa Diary, a channel where we talk about Black African history, culture, arts, and civilization. It's a place where you will see the real picture of Black Africa, its stories, and the events defining it. In this episode, we will debunk the lies and misconceptions about Africa told and spread by the West and Western media. Believe us, you are going to be surprised now. Let's get started. Number 10. All Africans live in huts. A common misconception implies that all Africans live in traditional mud huts, typically with roofs made of grass and dung. This oversimplification overlooks the very diversity of architectural diversity throughout the continent. While mud huts remain a prevalent housing form in rural areas, reflecting local traditions by tribes, it's essential to avoid reducing Africa to this singular portrayal. African cities like Cape Town in South Africa, Nairobi in Kenya, and Kigali in Rwanda present a picture of one of the most developed cities in the world. They are not much different than present-day Dubai, or European cities like Paris and Berlin. If African people do not consider it a dishonor to preserve their culture and live as their ancestors used to, this does not mean all of Africa lives in mud huts. However, little is known by the majority of the world who think that most Africans live in mud huts and live like tribes with no development and knowledge of the world. Number nine, the dark continent. Lie, debunking the myth of Africa as the dark continent requires a deep knowledge of historical contexts. Contrary to the idea that Europe remained uninformed about Africa until the 19th century, historical records show a well-established awareness spanning over 2,000 years. However, imperial ambitions led to a purposeful disregard for existing knowledge, fostering the misleading notion of Africa as a backward and savage territory. The term dark continent didn't arise from a lack of information but rather from Eurocentric narratives fueled by imperial agendas. You should know that Africa's history unfolds over millennia, from the emergence of hominids to the present, including diverse regions like the Kingdom of Kush, ancient Egypt, the Sahel, the Maghreb, and the Horn of Africa. It forms a rich history and culture that challenges simplistic stereotypes, encouraging a deeper understanding of Africa's diverse past and present. Number eight, there is no snowfall in Africa. Contrary to the belief that Africa doesn't get snow, several regions experience it regularly. A prime example is the Atlas Mountains in North Africa, spanning Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia. These mountainous areas, especially in winter, witness snowfall, transforming the landscape into a winter wonderland. Another notable location is the Drakensberg Mountains in South Africa, where snow is common during winter. Lesotho, a landlocked country entirely surrounded by South Africa, is also known to receive snowfall, particularly in its mountainous regions. Even East African countries with elevated topography, like Ethiopia and Kenya, witness snowfall in specific areas. Mount Kenya, for instance, gets snow on its peaks. This evidence challenges the misconception that Africa universally lacks snow. Africa's diverse geography includes mountainous regions with the necessary conditions for snowfall pushing back against the oversimplified stereotype that always portrays the entire continent as warm. Number seven, Africa lacked military strategy. Africans are frequently unfairly depicted as lacking strategic prowess in warfare. However, this perception is far from the truth. The organized nature of African warfare is exemplified by warfare strategies like the bullhorn formation of the Zulu, where soldiers divide into four groups and attack from the left, right and center position on the enemy, while the fourth group provides support to all. Flourishing ancient African kingdoms heavily depended on well-organized warriors and military strength for protection and expansion. A robust military presence not only instilled fear in smaller kingdoms, 
but also ensured the dominance of larger ones for many centuries. The earliest evidence of ancient African military prowess is found in the history of ancient Egypt, one of Africa's earliest known civilizations. Other ancient kingdoms, such as the Somali and Mali empires and the Dahomey warriors, an all-female army, also possess strong and capable warriors. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on Black Africa. Let's continue now. Number six, Egypt is the oldest African civilization. Well, that's an outright lie, as recent discoveries challenge this assumption. Evidence of the oldest recognizable monarchy in human history, predating the rise of the earliest Egyptian kings, has been unearthed in artifacts from ancient Nubia in Africa. This discovery suggests a more advanced form of political organization, where various chiefdoms were united under a powerful ruler, prompting a reassessment of the origins of civilization in Africa. Number five, Africa lacked civilization. In popular culture, Africa is often portrayed in terms of slavery, wildlife, or poverty overlooking the fact that it was the birthplace of some of the world's earliest civilizations. Africa boasts a rich history of kingdoms, large empires, and capitals that stand on their own merit. Contrary to the fallacy that Africa was primitive before European colonialism, it had thriving cities, empires, commerce, and fundamentally, a rich civilization. One notable example is the Mali Empire, which in the 12th century surpassed Western Europe in size and was considered one of the wealthiest states globally, existing between 1230 and 1600 AD. Number four, Africa doesn't have a written language. The misconception that the languages of Africa either lack a written form or have only recently been put to writing arises from the emphasis on oral culture and the impact of European languages due to colonialism. However, Africa possesses the world's oldest and largest collection of ancient writing systems, dating back to prehistoric times and spanning multiple regions of the continent. In contrast, Europe's oldest writing, Greek, wasn't fully in use until around 1400 BC, as evidenced by a clay tablet found in Eklena, Greece, and is largely derived from an older African script. The oldest Asian writing, proto-cuneiform, dates to around 3000 BC. Yet the oldest known African writing systems predate these by several centuries. Dr. Clyde Winters, the author of The Ancient Black Civilizations of Asia, observes that a flourishing civilization existed in the fertile African Sahara before the rise of the Egyptians and Sumerians, possibly developing the world's oldest known form of writing. Inscriptions of Proto-Saharan near the Karga Oasis west of what was considered Nubia may date back to as early as 5000 BC number three. Africa is poor and will always be. The Western media might find it hard to understand. Still, the truth is Africa is home to some of the world's fastest growing economies, with numerous nations experiencing economic growth rates that surpass those of developed countries. These nations attract foreign investments and sectors like technology, agriculture, and services significantly contribute to their economic advancement. Africa's economy is anything but uniform, encompassing various activities from agriculture and natural resource extraction to emerging technology hubs and service industries. Countries like Nigeria, Niger, Burkina Faso, South Africa, Kenya, and Ethiopia exhibit diverse economic landscapes with thriving sectors. The expansion of the middle class in Africa challenges the narrative of prevailing poverty as a substantial portion of the population falls within the middle income bracket, leading to increased consumer spending, economic stability, and improved living standards. African countries have demonstrated significant innovation, especially in technology and mobile banking. Mobile technology, for example, is creatively utilized to address challenges and propel economic progress. Africa actively engages in the digital revolution, dispelling the notion of lagging behind. The continent has natural resources, including minerals, oil, and agricultural products. Strategic management and responsible governance of these resources have the potential to propel economic growth and development. Entrepreneurship thrives in Africa, with individuals and communities initiating their projects and businesses. Grassroots initiatives, such as community-led development projects and social enterprises, 
are crucial in addressing local challenges and fostering sustainable growth. Number two, for Africa to develop, it should copy the West. There are various arguments against this assumption, but let us present only one. Many African countries are actually ahead of Western countries in terms of sustainable energy use. While both the UK and the US derive only 11% of their energy from renewable sources, Kenya sources 13% of its energy consumption from geothermal activities alone. Moreover, a remarkable 50% of Kenya's energy comes from hydroelectricity. Number one, Africans don't take action to help themselves. The stereotype of African people as helpless and reliant on Western aid has been fueled by decades of well-intentioned but arguably detrimental charity advertisements in the West. Exposed to images of sad, disheveled children whose eyes plead for urgent donations, it's no surprise that this belief is widespread. In 2010, Africans living outside the continent sent $51.8 billion back to Africa, surpassing the $43 billion sent in aid from Western countries, known as official development assistance. Yes, Africans abroad send more money back to their families than the entire Western world sends in aid. Did you believe any of these lies before watching the video? Do you think there are more lies told about Africa and Western countries to prove that Africa is a dark continent? Let us know your thoughts on what would happen if Western people were brought to African countries and show the reality. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We bring videos on Black Africa, its history, rich arts and culture, and things the world should know about. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.